attention to the automotive space and welcome in Melissa Armo, founder, owner of The Stock Swoosh. Melissa, glad you're on because we love to talk about the automotive space. It's certainly one that is very popular. People like to follow it. As you look at what's going on here, what are your initial thoughts on the automotive space and, and how it's performing? Well, cars is the ETF for this one to look at. And it's very interesting. It's a very, very bullish chart. If you play ETFs, uh, that definitely is a long. Norway just came out. The news is that they're going to stop all gas cars by 2025. So they want to move in that country to all electric cars by 2025. When you think about it, that's just four years away. So you really wonder where the future goes for a lot of these companies that are specializing in electric vehicles. I think Ford looks really the worst when you look at the charts of the automotives. And of course, Tesla is one of the best. The problem I have with Tesla is that the last time Tesla made a brand new all-time high was earlier this year in 2021. And we're nine months into the year, almost into October. So the stock's around 750-ish. It, it bounces between 750 and then 690, depending on the market moves. But the previous high of Tesla was 900. So that's a far, far place away for that to be. So I don't know why that's been dragging all year 2021, but normally you'd say Tesla would be the favorite in this sector. And it really, just the chart itself, even though it's still a strong chart, has not made new highs this year along with the market. Right. I mean, I have a couple of thoughts. The first is you mentioned Norway. Norway's already the leader in electric vehicles. I mean, I knew off the top of my head that more than 50% of the vehicles sold are electric vehicles. And I just quickly looked up here. And uh, according to at least one report, electric vehicles accounted for 54% of new car sales in 2020. So they're certainly moving in that direction. When you talk about Tesla, there's definitely this love-hate, right? Um, Kathy Wood of Arc saying, look, it, you know, her target is 3,000. And when it heads at or near there, she's going to take some money off the table. And then you had Truist putting a sell. So it's hard to know. Tell me a little bit about the whole semiconductor supply chain issue and whether or not you would put money to work in this group or would you wait until there's more clarity? I would wait because across the board in all industries right now, they're having supply issues. I heard with your previous guest, you were discussing Costco earnings that are just happening right now. They came out and announced and said, listen, we have about 60% of our supplies coming through the ports right now. Expect to, there to be delays for toilet paper. So it doesn't matter whether you're buying cars, whether you need, again, the chips uh, to do the manufacturing, whether you're getting specific foods, toilet paper, paper goods. Right now, there's main supply issues. So let me explain something to people why they're why the ports are backed up okay there's two reasons the ports are backed up one the ports are backed up because they don't have enough workers to be delivering as far as the truckers to deliver the goods and they're backed up also because they don't have as many employees and the warehouses then are backed up so when ships come in and they dock and the goods are are taken off the ships they don't have as many people there to get them into the warehouses and out Plus, the problem is with COVID. So there's all kinds of protocols when a ship comes into port that they have to go through these COVID protocols from port to port and country to country, and that creates massive, massive delays. It can be something just really small that you order online that happens to come from very far away, like China, or it could be something that you get in, in the United States domestically that's taking a long time to get maybe like from California to New York. There's a massive problem right now still in the United States with unemployment. But really, the COVID protocols are affecting a lot of these ports, too. So that's that's the problem with these delays. So I think I would wait and see. While some of these stocks are still in uptrends and very strong, General Motors is another one. That chart looks good, too. The fact is that we're getting into the period of the holiday period, and there's going to be demand for products, and there's going to be demand going into the holiday season for things. Again, phones, all of these things that we like to buy and all of these things that we like to buy need parts. <laughs> and so if they're having trouble yeah. getting the parts, then it's going to be a problem to manufacture the actual product that we want to buy. And it could be a delay into 2022. So that could create some drop off with the market. But overall, I'd be very cautious on this rally in the market. I know we had a big rally today and I was surprised on the rally back. But you were discussing Evergrande, too. You know what? They have not made their interest payment that was due yet today. They have not. Now, it's next. It's, it's, we're eight hours behind here in New York from China. 
Uh, but the fact is they didn't make the interest payment yet. So as far as they've reported, and there's another interest right, payment that's right. due next week. So we don't know where that's going to bring the market. Yeah. So you mentioned the CARS ETF and a brief mention of names like Ford and GM. Um, would you get into any of these? Are there any names that you like or would you completely avoid the sector? I mean, or, you know, you could do the other part of it. You could do parts suppliers. You could do the, you know, auto zones. You could do used cars. I mean, there's electric vehicles, there's rental vehicles, there's ride sharing. When we talk about autos, I mean, it feels very broad based. Is there anything that seems attractive to you? I, of course, I like NVIDIA. We've talked about that before as a chip maker, but long term, I do like Tesla. I do think Tesla will make a new high again. I do think Tesla has a huge, I don't know about 3,000, the number you said before. Right. It's certainly 1,000, 1,500 in the next 12 to 24 months. But if people are looking for short-term trades, I think you've got to take it day by day. Look at the last four days in the market. You could have shorted and then you could have flipped and gone long. That makes it difficult for people to decide what to do if they're in long-term plays because you've got to know your time horizon. If your time horizon is fast, if you're an active retail trader, be in and out in the day and play that specific move of the day. If your time horizon right. is long term, I do like General Motors. I do like Tesla. I do not like Ford. Okay. Um, and then there was another one, uh, the cars again. I think that's good long term, long term that ETF I like. Okay. All right. So Tesla, GM, cars, Ford, less so. Melissa, nice to see you. Thank you always. Melissa Armo, founder, owner, the Stock Swoosh. Thank you.